Hi, everyone. Uh, Rob Kim, LFS Career Strategist. I'm here to talk about uh, LinkedIn, something that I really enjoy talking about. And we're going to be using LinkedIn today in terms of a context of looking for a job in terms of job search. So we are going to just go through like a lot of stuff and then the kind of next 50 minutes or so. And then I'll have maybe a little bit of time at the end to answer some questions. I'm going to share my screen here. And there's my email, rob.kim at ubc.ca. So again, we're going to be using this uh, webinar as a way for to think about your job search strategies. And I think LinkedIn is a great tool to do that. Just want to acknowledge we are on the ancestral, traditional, and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. I think about uh, the ways that we are connected uh, because of the land that we get to learn on. I'm on campus today. It's quite nice out today. And uh, I just want to uh, acknowledge my gratitude that we are all digitally connected here. We have about 27 participants. So that's really good. And uh, again, I hope all of you can uh, take something from this session today. If you want, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm there quite a bit. I try to write about three to four times a week uh, and uh, I share some career education tips and LinkedIn tips, workplace tips uh, through there. So uh, connect and follow with me if you're not already there. Uh, I wanna just also acknowledge I have a bias. I, I really enjoy LinkedIn, but that wasn't the case maybe four years ago when I really started using it uh, a lot. And one thing that's kind of happened it was uh, earlier this year, um, I was named one of the uh, 10 top voices for LinkedIn uh, in terms of job search and careers, which was really kind of surprising to me because I had just been really testing things out, uh, practicing things. Uh, and everything that I'm going to be talking about today is stuff that I've learned. I'm kind of really dumping a lot of different ideas on you. And remember, these are just ideas at the end of the day. So I want to encourage you to test them out. I've tried all of these ideas out as well. And I think what I'm trying to really get at is I didn't expect this outcome, but certainly what happened, it was a result of uh, a lot of trial and error and testing. And that's why I'm excited to do this session with you today, because I'm trying to compact some of that knowledge for you. And hopefully someone on this call will be like, hey, I think I can try something a little bit differently. Because when I first started, in, you know, really using LinkedIn about 2018, um, it's really difficult. And I still struggle with lots of things. And I think I want to always encourage people that, you know, wherever you are, just think about where you would like to be and how you can get there. So let's start maybe reframing LinkedIn a little bit here, because I'm speaking as an introvert and someone who has a tendency to be shy. I have a hard time maybe talking about myself. So I want to really maybe share how you can think about LinkedIn for job search, right? So there's a concept, uh, weak ties versus strong ties. This is from the work that Mark Granovetter did in about 1970. And the basics is this, strong ties, someone you really know really well, uh, friends and family, that's kind of like your tight network versus weak ties. Weak ties, we would all maybe be considered weak ties if we, ha we haven't met that much. We are definitely connected now after this webinar. Weak ties are people in your network that are uh, considered acquaintances, you can have varying levels of weak ties. And often when you kind of think of weak versus strong, a lot of us think about how strong ties are very impactful for a career. And actually what Mark Granovetter was saying is um, he positioned that weak ties are actually also very important for your career development because weak tie people bring in new information, new opportunities. That's how you learn about um, different things because your circle, you tend to kind of have similar interests or you, you kind of know this, the same sort of things. So uh, there is an interesting study that followed up on this just from September. And what it actually talked about is it confirmed that weak ties do have impact. And the study analyzed LinkedIn, how weak ties increase job mobility. The, the study looked at 20 million people over LinkedIn over a four-year period. Uh, they looked at 2 billion new, uh, like, new ties were created and 600,000 new jobs were created. And there's kind of three things that came out of the study. First, uh, the main part was there was a causal link of the strength of weak ties. But they also said, hey, the strength of weak ties were kind of non-linear. So it, it wasn't like that, hey, as you got weaker, it was like, you know, more effective. It was just kind of like 
there was a sweet point where the weak tie in terms of how strong it was, was more effective. And that's what the second point's kind of going to is moderately and weakest weak ties both created uh, the most job mobility. And then they kind of observed that weak ties were a little bit more beneficial for people in the digital industry and then strong ties for less in the digital industry. So really all I'm trying to encourage you here is to think about in terms of job search, how you can use LinkedIn to practice making weak ties. LinkedIn is a, a treasure trove of potential weak ties. And that's something that I've kind of realized through, uh, you know, just using it quite a bit. So the hypothesis could be like this. If weak ties help, then by focusing on using LinkedIn, you will increase your job search odds. Another way I like to kind of talk about that is if you think about your job search strategy, a lot of job search strategy, a typical thing would be you see an online job posting and you apply for it. The odds are very, very low, right? Let's say you have a hundred job applicants. Well, if it's one posting, one position, that means the committee probably is looking maybe anywhere from three to five candidates. It's not a lot of interview candidates for one position because it takes a lot of time and coordination to do, do that. <coughs> Excuse me. So you go from 100 to five, and then of that five, one of you gets the job. So it's not, I'm not here to uh, make you feel really bad about this. I just like thinking about those numbers to then asking myself, well, either I'm just going to apply online, or I'm going to maybe use a multitude of strategies to increase my odds. And so if you think about taking weak ties plus online application, that's greater than online applying. And so again, that helps me uh, have a little bit more courage or maybe a little bit more focused interest if I'm kind of playing around with LinkedIn. So I'm going to present to you the six LinkedIn levels of the elevator of courage. That sounds like a bad book. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take you through six steps that you can use for yourself in terms of um, kind of job search strategies and tips. As we go through the six levels, like the easiest is going to be the first level. And then by step six, which I don't even think we'll really get into that deep, uh, is going to be kind of the hardest thing. And I hope that all of you are at different levels that you'll be able to pick something at each of those levels as well. So again, we're just brainstorming a lot of different ideas for you to create a little bit more strategic job search plan other than just applying online and we're doing that with a lens of, hey, how do we create more weak ties? So if I think about LinkedIn job search, those six levels, you can think about job postings, research, your profile, follow, connect, reach out, and then content. And again, this is kind of done with the umbrella of thinking about weak ties. So let's start with level one, everyone. Level one, job postings. So I think about, again, I'm going to present some easier things. I'll demo uh, some of these things for you. I'll walk you through some of the settings. Some of you are going to be aware of some of these tools. Others will not. And I think about, again, easy to harder. What is going to require a little bit more courage? So in terms of job postings, I think this is some place that all of you can start. So that might be setting a job alert with filters. Um, I'll show you how you can verify that with kind of your communication settings. And um, let's let's take a look at that right now. And so I just want to acknowledge and thank uh, Vivian, Vivian Lee, who's our work learn student for LFS mentorship program. Uh, she has graciously uh, allowed us to use her profile just to kind of walk through some of these things. So <laughs> the first step is we're going to look at how we can use the job filters, which are quite actually neat and cool. And it allows you to kind of even start thinking about more of what you want. So um, let's say Vivian is interested in Microsoft. So I'm going to go to the company page here. And what you can do here is the desktop version gives you a little bit more control in terms of filters. Okay. So notice all these tabs here. It, later on, if you were doing research, you can go to a company page, you can look at their about section, their life. There's lots of stuff that you can learn in terms of researching before you um, go into interview or <clears throat> before you're applying. But let's say I click this tab jobs. I'm not going to go look at this necessary. I'm going to click the see all jobs. And what I really like about this is you can actually start using um, these filters to start 
kind of educating yourself or helping you identify what sort of roles are out there, even getting a sense of the job market. Like if you were to do this in 2020, you wouldn't get a lot of results, right? There was a really hard job market. I think we see the job market, it is kind of slowing down, right? But we also can see that there's still lots of vacancies. So let's go with this. Um, I can go, I want to go maybe past month. So I'm going to whittle that down. I'm going to go to experience level. So maybe I'm thinking like, okay, I'm just graduating. I'm looking for maybe entry associate. I'm going to go with that. And then I'm going to go job type. And I'm like, well, you know, I wouldn't mind part-time, full-time, heck, internship. So I probably didn't need to click all that, but I just want to show you the, the one there. And then for me, I'm like, you know, I really like hybrid and remote. I do not want to be on site. So I might hit that. I can also change everyone see this worldwide here. I could change it to Canada as well. Sometimes it does some messed up things here. So I just want to be careful. Okay, so it, it, it did that. Sometimes it will like kick me out to like a actual Canada search. So now look at this, I'm down to 71 results, right? So what I can do is once I have all these filters in place, the key here is everyone see this little set alert? I'm going to just click that now. And then I have alert on that uses these same filters moving forward and linked. And so I'm basically automating some job search for me. So it's a nice way to, again, this is going to be more helpful again with some of your bigger companies, but again, you'd be surprised which some, what companies are posting here on LinkedIn. And then what I'm going to show you, just so you don't get annoyed, you're going to go into settings and privacy, everyone. So go there. And then when you get to the settings and privacy, go to communications. And then I would say, really check off the notifications that you need or want. Otherwise, it gets pretty annoying. So if I want on LinkedIn and see the jobs notifications, right now, the default is going to be all on. So I'm like, well, I don't want all that, right? So I could turn that all off. Or in this case, I might say, okay, um, I'm going to get rid of just a couple of these things. So what you can do, everyone, again, under your profile, you go to settings and privacy, communications. The, the communications one is good because then you are going to repeat that for each one. It is a little bit annoying. But once you take a little care to do that, then you can make sure you're not just getting inundated by emails and notifications. Maybe some of you do want to, right? So you can change, again, the on LinkedIn, email, and your push notifications. Okay, so that's just showing that one there. I want to also show uh, another thing while I'm on, on the profile. Give me one second. I just want to grab it. Um, I also recommend that when you see a good job posting, I would probably start taking a screenshot of it or again, maybe organizing um, some of my research, which we'll talk about next, because I could find out things like, hey, skills, responsibilities, uh, this might help me identify more of what I want to do in my current job or identify better links to my past experiences. And then also sometimes, especially if they're US postings, you will sometimes see like salary ranges, especially any US role, it will usually have an addendum there with Colorado, now New York State as well. They need to list these bands. That can be very helpful for your negotiation later. So I like to screenshot these job postings. Why? They're like gold to me because they disappear after a while, right? So I want to make sure I have that in the future, uh, but it can also help me with my job search because sometimes I can actually use this posting to then look at, Hey, what other jobs are similar to this in other larger companies or other companies, et cetera? All right. Um, let's exit over there. So again, you can see we just covered that and a little bit more effort. I actually use an Excel document to track that information about jobs, responsibility and salaries. Um, and I screenshot the job posting. I'm recording minutes. I don't know why that's in there. That's a typo. Okay. Level two. Let's talk about research. Uh, I think about, again, level of courage needed. It, it starts with yourself. So I will sometimes use a people, places, positions framework where 
I will think about the people I might want to work with or learn from the places I want to work with, or I know I can contribute to. And even then sometimes like, is this a job that helps me sometimes narrow my focus? Cause I think sometimes if you're thinking about pivoting or you want to do something new, uh, it's a little bit difficult to figure that out. And rather than saying I'm open to anything, I think it's a little bit better to practice being specific, then you can always change your mind, right? I also go with starting with yourself is maybe understand your job filters, what do you want? So notice when we use the job filters, you might be like, you know, I really want hybrid work, that's super important to me, or, you know, what positions interest me and why those are really important before I think um, you sometimes set out to do the research, right? If you don't have a research question, I mean, then you could go to the library and you'd be like, there's lots of knowledge in here, like that's not helpful, right? So again, it's sometimes maybe having a course syllabus or even a rubric to help you. So that's why I don't care what you use. I just more think about starting with yourself. Then from a weak tie lens, I think you can do things like look up former colleagues and classmates, you're researching them, you're understanding, hey, how, what are they doing? Or even looking at how they got there, you might get new places, uh, to maybe apply to, uh, or you get new companies and positions to learn about. Um, and then I think about the alumni search tool, which I'm going to demo along with uh, using the LinkedIn kind of GitHub career explorer. That's a great way to maybe sometimes look at what skills you have or need for different jobs and pathways. It's a little bit limited sometimes because it goes regional, but I'll show you that tool. It's kind of neat to play around with a bit. I, you know, I, I maybe look at it once every few months, but I, I want to show you just a couple uh, versions of, of this. So again, remember weak ties, right? So I love the alumni search. So if you go University of British Columbia, the company page, you should be following it if you're not. Um, and if you go to the alumni tab here, everyone, again, this is a Boolean search. So we're just doing research. And um, I have 255,000 alumni to search. Now notice you could do this search for all of LinkedIn in that tab above, right? Like here, that's 850 million people, but I'm starting off a little bit of a weak tie. Like, hey, we are, we are all UBC. We're connected, right, to UBC, whether we're alumni or currently studying here. So um, I don't know, can someone give me a, a job title or a position in the chat or unmute yourself, give me something. Nothing, nobody's got anything for me. Maybe Vivian, you can give me something. It's your profile. I don't know, data analyst. Okay, so <laughs> thank you, data analyst. So if I punch that in there, I can hit this and then kind of start searching. So now I'm down to four, 5,000. So like a Boolean search, probably data is coming a lot in there. So I might want to use quote, the close quotations, but whatever. I'm going to show you there's a whole bunch of filters, right? Where they work, where they live, what they do. So I can change any of these looking at the connection. So my, I might be like, well, I want to focus on people who are in Vancouver. I want to work in Vancouver. I think that's my one top filter, right? So again, we're just doing like a Google map search. So I might go through here and say, okay, um, let's look at a bunch of people here. And I might say, well, let's see. Um, I want to find someone. Oh, data analyst at the Canadian Red Cross. That's neat because that's how this works. I always say, encourage you can't be what you can't see. So for my job search, I'm trying to increase the types of opportunities and roles that I might be um, in line for or interested in. And, and part of that is I have to do the research. So, uh, you know, I would have not never thought of a data analyst being at the Canadian Red Cross, but of course that makes sense. And then I might take a look And this person here uh, has given me some good stuff. They, they have some pretty good bullet points so that I might be able to look at like, what do I have? What am I missing? But now I also get to see like what they did in between. So I can take a look at some of their experiences and I might be like, oh, maybe I should look at Hydro or, oh, what's this club that's here on campus if you're right now at UBC? So there's a bunch of different ways to do that. I like to keep my research probably focused. I like to look at like one 
new industry every two weeks or so every month. And then I like to identify two to three people that I want to um, maybe reach, um, sorry, um, learn from or understand better. So the alumni search tool, really great way of like, actually, like, learning about different types of jobs out there. Again, you can't be what you can't see. When people come see me and say, Oh, I, I'm, you know, I'm not sure what I want to do. I really want to push them to say, well, maybe make the question more of an action of, hey, I want to try to discover three new jobs to apply to or three new positions, right? So that's going to push you to maybe take action. Oh, and see, look at this nice mutual connection. Fellini, you are connected with them. I don't know how well you know this person. <clears throat> um, yeah, that's a great question, Aaron. So Aaron is asking from an applied biology lens, um, how can you search better for your discipline? And so, yeah, I would look at, that's tough. And so, you know, if, because again, if you're an LFS, for instance, a lot of people might not use the program specific name of, uh, right? And so you might have to actually start looking at maybe skill keywords, and I'll show you what that might look like actually, all right? Actually, that's a perfect segue. <clears throat> and that's going to go into um, this, this nice neat tool here. Give me one second. Too many windows. Okay, so the LinkedIn GitHub Explorer, I'll chuck that in the chat right now. And so Aaron asked a great question. This is a way you could do that. So notice what it does. It's using all of LinkedIn's data. It's very fascinating. So like, you know, showcasing like, hey, if you're a food server right now, and then you're thinking about maybe wanting to be an operations coordinator, it uses the skills in those roles and starts comparing them and looking at, okay, which are the shared skills are we seeing for these two kind of roles? And so it's pretty fascinating stuff. So what you can do, and I find the data for Vancouver is a little bit sometimes lacking. So maybe even selecting a larger city would be more helpful. But like I, I just entered into the job like resource associate. I'll tell you one thing, everyone, just this alone to me is great because it starts telling me these titles that I might then use in that alumni search or use in LinkedIn because I might be thinking like, oh, human resource officer, but notice that it's not really showing up like that, even though maybe say your company's using that. So I, I think there's a lot of value in this alone. But let's say I do human resource associate, it's telling me the skills. So I might copy and paste these and maybe start using these as ways to kind of search. Um, but also it tells me like, if I want to uh, do this, it's looking at kind of what the overlap is, what are kind of like the popularity. So it's, it's a really cool um, tool. And I really encourage you to uh, check that one out. Okay. So that's an example of, again, of like expanding some of your keyword searches for the alumni search tool as well. Okay. Level two, done. Let's go up that elevator level three. It's your profile, everyone. And I think the profile is very hard. I think uh, a lot of us are on some spectrum of like, I feel like my profile is not that great. I will say right away, I really do not like lots of my profile. But what I do is I spend a little bit of time, a little bit of TLC, and then I just kind of move on and let it go. What I want you to consider for your profile is thinking about, again, weak ties, the way you can actually tend to your profile could make someone connect to you a little bit quicker or identify with you or recruiters, they use a tool, right? For they use LinkedIn recruiter, they can discover you much faster, depending on the search parameters they're using. So let's start off with easier. Um, I would take a look at your photo, the photo I've included here, not that great. I look like I'm, <clears throat> I look like I'm very angry, but we know that adding a photo increases kind of connection requests, profile views, all these sort of things. I recognize that some of you um, might be hesitant. Give me one sec. I need some water here.
Sorry about that. Uh, so you might be hesitant with adding a photo, but I really encourage you. Like this is a social networking thing. Uh, I I don't like looking at my photos at all, uh, but again, it's helpful um, to kind of like make those connections, right? So I think about also customizing your LinkedIn URL, and then this new one I thought about. Uh, I learned from someone on LinkedIn, Bernadette. Uh, oh my goodness, what's her name? She's a like a career coach here in Canada, uh, talked about adding the URL of the company that you're working at in your experience section. I thought, oh, that's a great kind of visual. So I think those are easy things to do. Certainly right now you can join me and let's customize your LinkedIn URL or take a look at your photo. So let's do that right now together. So if I go to here, if you go to your profile again, and you go to view profile, see this everyone, edit public profile and URL, you click that. And so Vivian has VLE 29. So if she wanted to, she could do maybe a Vivian Lee or maybe VV Lee. Uh, but uh, you know, that's, you click that pencil and then you can get a nice customized URL. Listen, that's not going to get you the job, but certainly it's those little touches that I really believe build up confidence in my own profile. So I would really recommend kind of customizing that URL. If you can, can do that right now, go ahead. You can just edit that. And then the other one is if you look at your, the photo here, um, Vivian's got a good three quarter cropped photo, uh, probably use the iPhone portrait mode or something like that, where you get the blurred background. I think it's really easy. Find a friend who has like an iPhone seven plus or higher um, sorry, Android people, I don't know which one that would be. And you can go outside, look at the sun, get a blurred background, really um, much easier these days to get a decent profile. So please watch your cropping, you're not cropping someone else out of the photo. And why we want to zoom in a little bit more is because notice right now on the desktop, it's fine. But this is what I call a persistent element. It's part of your brand, it follows you around everywhere. So on mobile, Anytime you're commenting, it's you know a little tiny little icon. It's a little bit easier sometimes to see your face, so you might want to zoom in, right? Again, you make that choice, but I think there's um, little easy things you can do with your cropping um, of your photo. A bit more work is the open to work feature. So let's take a look at that and picking three skills and then using the LinkedIn builder to kind of weak tie your profile. So if we were to look at what that looked like, if we go here, everyone see this open to, if you click open to and you're finding a new job, there's two settings here. So you can, again, write down where you want to work. I'm gonna maybe even put uh, Vancouver. I'm gonna go a little bit broader than Burnaby. So even maybe greater Vancouver area, right? Uh, and then I would maybe select, I want hybrid and remote. I can add in job titles of where I'd like to work. So again, maybe data analyst, but I, again, I like see how it populates all the titles that LinkedIn has in their database. So that is another learning moment for, for me. Maybe again, human resource, I wanna be assistant and then uh, let's, let's even look at, I don't know, plant, let's see what kind of plant, plant supervisor, assistant plant manager. I don't think that's the plants that I'm talking is thinking about though. Let's go with, maybe I want to just go to greenhouse for now. So let's do greenhouse, uh, technician or something like that. Okay. So I think you could do five titles or four titles or something like that. Um, I might just, again, click this off and add remote location. I might do Canada because sometimes you can get away with that. And then start date, you can just write down whatever you want. Full time, uh, in this case, maybe I'm gonna select a bunch of these. And here we go, everyone. This is where you choose. Now, there's a big stigma attached to putting the open to work on your little profile. But again, LinkedIn continually, month after month, talks about the data shows that when you click this, you know, you will just get more, more views, right? Um, and the and recruiters are alerted to um, your profile a little bit more. Now, of course, sometimes you're like, well, I'm working, I don't want my colleagues to know. So maybe you're just going to click this. 
people using LinkedIn, and then you can add that to your profile. So boom, there you go. Um, and then what's this next update your settings get notified. Oh, I want to turn that off for now. So there we go. Okay. So that's one easy way to, again, increase your job search, like kind of you're trying to actually get recruiters to look at your profile a little bit. Now, um, if we look at the resume builder, everyone, here's another way to, again, understand keywords to help your searches. So this feeds back into the research component as well. But you can also use these keywords to like better write some of your experiences, your headline, your about section. So everyone see this, the more, see that build a resume. If you click the build a resume there, um, I'm not going to really use it for a resume, but I'm going to just like create from profile. Okay. And if I do that again, and I go data analyst. So this is like my desired job title. I apply. And what it does, it's kind of neat. It combs my whole profile and says, hey, when we look at the data analyst role, these are the types of words that we skills are things that we see, but this is what we're finding in your profile. So notice I might have like decision-making skills. I might want to use the word analytical skills. So these are some terms I might want to add in. And if you look at show more, it tells me some either more keywords. And that's where I can go back and repopulate them either into my skills section, into my about section, experiences. And then again, Aaron, these are things that you could use again <clears throat> for your Boolean searches in the alumni or even again, all of LinkedIn, right? Looking for job postings, okay? So that is the resume builder. I'm gonna walk you through that one more time real quick because I know it's hard to see. If you hit more, build a resume it allows you to kind of you it, it's basically for me that tool is auditing your current profile right and then again this job search technique is we're trying to increase recruiter eyeballs on our profile okay um so i even put there you can use the resume builder to weak tie your profile and what i mean by weak ties you're trying to like reach out to the audience that you're thinking about, whether it's an industry or company, the position that you're trying to get into, why not try to speak some of their language? That's a way to start creating a weak tie, right? Like they will identify you as, oh, this is someone who works in our industry, wants to work on industry, et cetera. Now, the harder one is the just do it. Oops, sorry. Uh, and you know, I think of maybe using Canva to create a unique LinkedIn banner. At the end of the session, I'll have some links to um, uh, a template there. The about section, which is the hardest, I think, is using a framework like value, skills, strengths, and interests to help you, and then your headline. So I'm going to say right now, <clears throat> Viv's done a good job of, you know, she's using uh, not the default setting. UBC probably want to be careful using photos that you don't own i would say that uh in this case although i don't i know people aren't getting really dinged for that in terms of if you're at ubc um i'll show you mine super cheesy if you look at mine here um i use this is from a canva template um i got real intense because i recognize on the desktop your face covers the left side but on your cell phone it goes into the middle so i'm just telling you these intense things that I've thought about and done, not for you to be like, oh my goodness, it's more for you to understand that again, I've been thinking about this for four years. Some of you are just starting this journey. And so I, I but I like to show you what it could look like, not to scare you, but to be like, oh, I can work to there or maybe even jump ahead. So again, this is pretty cheesy, but uh, again, I, I have the colors there um, and kind of pulling in that together. So that's maybe getting someone to see my visual, which you can actually, again, see when you go to um, the University of British Columbia um, here. Again, look at the alumni. If you're scrolling, look at most people using the default, that gray, that, that Vancouver November gray, right? So um, again, you might want to consider, hey, that's a billboard. That's a place to again, create a little bit of a weak tie um, place, a, a connection there, okay? Um, oh, let's talk about headlines now. Tough one. 
A lot of you will probably be using the default head, he, headers. So um, this is tricky. So what you might want to consider for your headline is you can think about, you know, again, using a VSI table to kind of start uh, to focus with. And I'm going to put this in the chat here for you. Oops, sorry. I didn't copy it. And what I like about, you know, just thinking about your header is let, let's try not to use the default, right? And if you're a student at UBC, you usually will default to like what you're studying. If you have a current role for some of the mentors here, again, it will just like state your position in the company. So I think what your header to is sometimes you want to think about the job that you want to go for, not what you're doing. You're trying to convince people that this is what I can do, right? So uh, I, I'm not saying these are great, but these are things that I've tried out where you might have a, like, you know, you go to the VSI table, which looks like this, you go over your values, skills, and interests, and then you might try to come up with something like a sentence that represents those three things or one of those three things. Um, the I help to... I help blank to do blank statement is a, a one that you see that's kind of popular, or sometimes you might use a short X, Y, Z framework. Um, I really don't like my headline right now, but again, you could use some of the skills that you saw, maybe one word in there in your headline, because again, that that's something that the recruiters um, can comb through, but you don't want to be like obvious. You don't want to be like data analyst, strategic, like, you know, like that, that's just like, again, trying to game the system, like you're going to, you're, you want it to, for them to be able to see that and then look at your profile and say, yeah, this is a potential candidate for this job, right? Or it makes sense why this person's reaching out to me, that sort of thing. So again, you can test that out, um, you know, kind of doing that. And I think that's a great way, again, of like showcasing and trying to change what you have currently, all right? All right. Hey, I'm not going to go into the about section too much because I think it requires a lot more work. But again, that's one of the harder things there. It requires a lot of courage. And I think what you can do is, again, write to the industry that you're trying to get into or the job that you're trying to get into, showcasing maybe some skills or unique things that you have. <clears throat> All right, we got three more levels. We're going to go through that. Level three was the biggest one. And um, four is going to be pretty quick here. Uh, so, you know, I think about follow and connect. So what you can do is you can follow company page. You can follow a person. You can follow recruiters. I've talked to people who run a company page. They can see when you are actually following. They can see your engagement. So that's not going to be the thing, but that is starting to build weak ties where it's like, oh, this person uh, applied for this job, they can look at the activity and they say, oh, they've been actually following us for a while now, or those sort of things. You can start following recruiters. Um, and then I think you can also curate your feed. So you can teach the LinkedIn algorithm to showcase things in your feed by how you engage with things, right? So that can be simple likes, comments, um, selecting the bill, the, selecting the bell, and I'm going to show you that in a second, and following hashtags. So then we'll get into a little bit of connect versus follow. So let's let's look at that a bit here. So if you go to uh, someone's profile, so Viv's gonna look up Rob Kim. She's like, who is this guy? And so if you go to their profile right now, we are connected, but see this bell here, everyone? You can hit this bell and you can get notified of their posts, right? So you can select that bell and that will curate their post to show up a little bit more um, in your feed. Okay, so that's number one. Um, you can also choose to, I'm going to just, I don't know, choose someone big. Let's go Bill Gates. Okay, and so if you go to like William Gates here, what you can do is you have an option, everyone. So um, see the follow, I can choose that. And that way, I'll see what they post, even though they don't have to accept my connection. So that's a nice, easy thing to do. So you can hit follow, right? And now I'm following them, and then I can hit the bell. So 
I believe once you hit follow, the bell shows up. Yep, there it is, verified again. So again, I hit follow and I can hit the bell. I'm getting more notified about this person's posts. So you can start following people in different industries and companies and roles. And then if you wanted to, the difference would be connecting. I can connect with someone. And really what the connection means is then you can, if you do get connected, you can send messages and DMs with each other, um, that sort of thing. So I can hit connect. And this person, of course, they need the email. So maybe I can send add a note and then type in, Hey, Bill, love Microsoft Word. Would love to be connected here, right? So you're just sending a short message uh, to connect. And so um, that is the difference between connect and follow. If you hit connect and send a message, it will automatically now follow that person as well. So I just want you to be aware of that. So again, that's a great way to, again, start um, you know, learning from other people. And then... Part of it is getting the confidence to reach out and connect to try to, um, again, connect them. And I, I've put in the template here just kind of an example of what that might look like. Oops, wrong one. Ah. So if you go to that, that might be something like, hello, X, I loved your post today. You're right about why. Um, sometimes I like to quote like a little chunk of what they, they said. And then I'm also passionate about Zed. And then, oops, I forgot to even finish. Would, would like to connect here and continue learning more from you. And then Rob, right? So that's just something you could send in. I, I'm going to tell you, one thing people say on LinkedIn all the time is like, I never accept any connection requests until, uh, unless you send me a note. Um, and I'm here to tell you that, I don't know, I'm up to like almost nine, over 9,000 <clears throat> connections, well, 6,000 connections, sorry. A and a lot of them, I, I'm, I rarely send a note. Like I look at a couple of people, I'm interested and I just ask to connect, that's it. And I'm just going to be aware that because I didn't spend a lot of effort, I'm not expecting a lot in return. I actually kind of like to do this weird inverse connection where once they connect with me, I actually send them a message say, hey, thanks for connecting. I like, I like da, 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 da. So really, I'm here to tell you that if you're really shy or you really need some courage, like just send out connections, but knowing that you're going to get less responses, but you'll still get some responses, especially like um, one technique you can use is someone celebrates a new job or is excited or sharing something about new that they did, you can like their post. And I think if you send out a connection at that point, they're more likely to want to connect you because they're new in the role. They're excited. They're like, who's this? I find that um, that's one of my hypotheses. And it's actually um, seems like it has a higher rate, but you know, you can just run a test. And I said that in the, in this session here about kind of doing an AB test. Okay. So again, if they don't connect with you, honestly, it sucks sometimes. Uh, I but you know, just move on. Try again. There's 850 million people. I think uh, try maybe not to convince those people who don't want to connect with you. Just gonna again move on. All right. Last couple of things. Level five. Now, everybody, this this is the part that requires a, a lot of courage. Okay. I I, I think. This is the most challenging part. I'm going to need some water before I get into it. So remember, we're talking about job search here. Okay. So if you're just online applying, that is that means you are competing against all these other people. How do you stand out? I mean, yeah, you can write your cover letter, write your resume. Um, that's important, but I also want to increase my odds. So the reach out, this is now you're connected with someone, let's say, right? So how you can start off is you can like and com comment on their posts, right? You can add a like and comment. I will say anyone who comments, unless they're saying something mean about me, anyone who comments on my post, I can't help actually start looking at you in a positive light, right? That, and that's a weak tie connection, right? And I think about this whole level of reach out 
one strategy is thinking about how you're giving and you're not just trying to uh, take, right? I'm not just like, hey, I want a job. Um, another interesting way to engage, and this is also curating your feed a little bit, you can bookmark a person's activity. So what I realize is sometimes, you know, there's someone you're really interested in and learning from, but, you know, if you click on their profile, they can see you. I think that's fine. But sometimes, you know, I feel like, oh, I don't want to be clicking on their profile every day. Um, so what you could actually do is if you take anyone's LinkedIn URL and just put backslash recent activity shares, you can actually see all their activity. Now, I know that sounds a little bit creepy, but it's a really interesting way to learn from people. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So again, if I, let's see. Yeah, let's use Sarah Johnson. So Sarah Johnson, someone who I like, uh, uh, she's a great follow. And uh, I learn a lot from her in terms of resume writing. And so look at the hyperlink there, uh, the URL there, everyone, right? Sarah Johnson backslash recent activity shares. This is what I bookmark. I can bookmark this. I have a, a certain people I follow week to week in a folder, and then I can just jump in and see what they've done. So I can see any posts. I can see maybe articles they've shared. I can even see all their activity where this is sometimes you will remember week ties, everyone. I might get introduced to some new person or new company or new idea that otherwise would have been buried. So I really like, again, using um, this one. Actually, to even shorten it, you can just put backslash recent activity. So the first time I go to someone's profile, what I'll do is I won't actually book that URL. I'll just type in recent activity or everyone. You can find it if you scroll down to here. See everyone? Show all activity. If you click show all activity, it takes me to the recent activity. In most cases, I want to see posts. What I'm also doing is I'm setting myself up for reach outs, just playing a game of odds here. If I reach out to someone or try to chat with someone, um, the odds that if they're not active on LinkedIn, if I reach out, uh, you know, probably lesser chance that they're going to respond back, right? So that that's helpful too. So again, that is a great thing to bookmark. And that way you can, uh, again, keep on learning from someone in that regard. All right. I recognize we're at time. Some of you are probably need to go to classes here. So endorse, um, I, you know, that's a great way. Endorse someone's skills, write a recommendation. I, you know, when someone endorses my skills, that's always appreciated. That's a great way to, again, reconnect with people. Um, extend. And this is where we're going to really kind of end off here is reaching out for informational interviews. All of you are somehow connected to, most of you are connected to like mentorship. To me, that's a form of informational interviews. And I really hadn't even known this concept. This is something that they teach a lot of business schools, like a lot of solder students probably know this. So you can reach out to informational interviews to get the courage to do that. And you can also reach out when you're applying. And I am going to share these last two templates with you because I think these ones are really great. Um, and if you take a look, this one's right now, this recruiter from Microsoft says, hey, if you are applying for a job, right, job search strategy, why not send this to someone that you know in the company? And I really like this, like this strategy is like just trying to get some different eyes or elevate your, your resume or to the right people. So this is interesting, takes a lot of courage to do, but I look at it like, why wouldn't I try to do something different to kind of set myself as, like, you know, aside different from the crowd, right? Uh, and then, so that's like in complementary with applying to an actual role. So that's really interesting. I've never actually tried that myself. Um, you know, you can get direct referrals too. Some people will have actually different links for direct referrals. Like in some of the larger companies like Microsoft, you get kind of rewarded if you get new people to come to the company too. So you, you, you know, please be aware of that, right? For your job search. And then informational interviews. This is a great way. Um, and then Awesome Bellsack has a great demonstration of reach out. We've I've provided you some questions that you can do. This to me is harder stuff. It's why I put it at the very end. But this is the way that I think you can level up your job search through um, LinkedIn. To wrap it all up, um, and actually, sorry, and then Reno Perry has a great one about what you do when you're rejected with a role. Uh, great way to kind of keep on the top of mind. This is all weak link, weak tie stuff, everyone.
Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the level six. It's the hardest. It's content. I will tell you this, everyone. If you want to increase your week ties, you can get more eyeballs on your profiles. That's just writing content. It's also the hardest thing to do. I think I started at once a month, then once a week. Now I'm probably like three to four times a week in terms of original content. I'm not saying it's the best strategy, but certainly you might want to consider having a couple posts because you can actually then showcase it on your profile. They can see that you're engaged. That's a great way if especially you're pivoting into different industry to show how you learn or, or show your enthusiasm or passion to do the, the role that you're trying to think of. So I've given you some ideas here. Um, but again, you can, again, follow me and you can see like all the different things I'm testing out with content. This is the hardest thing to do. But I will share with you that uh, the way I look at it is like, I'm a champion of failing using LinkedIn. I've done terrible posts, posts with no eyeballs, but you just keep on doing it and doing it. You get into habit. And it's been one of the biggest things in terms of like being able to connect with people, influencing people. And that's where kind of like, a job search strategy is like, I know in the future, if I had to look for a job, I could get people maybe reaching out to me or wanting me rather than me saying, Hey, please hire me, which is very different, right? Like in thinking about, again, um, getting more known in terms of your work. And so I think about, you know, if you look at the ROI in terms of like job posting, creation, content creation, how that connects to weak ties, this is like the content performance in here. And again, I'm not, I don't have huge, uh, a huge following, but, you know, that's like a, over a million impressions. I'm hitting places in Vancouver, all over the world. This is just like over a year. So some posts, it's so interesting to see the different people and industries that are looking at your posts or your profile, probably average about 1200 profile views a week now, right? So that's, that, that happens again through content. And that's one of the great ways to level up. Um, I'm going to end there. Uh, with a couple observations, you know, LinkedIn to me, uh, it's like people like eating kimchi, but most people don't like to make it. It's very hard to make actually. Uh, and that's kind of like, if you see someone's profile, you're like, I love a good profile. It's just really hard for us to believe we can make a good one for ourselves. And I want to encourage you, don't overthink it. Just try something new. Uh, observation two, building weak ties is like baking bread. It requires actually time and effort to dedicate to creating these weak ties, you do have to put in a little bit of effort, maybe not as much time as a strong tie, but certainly you can see using LinkedIn as a tool, you can do that. And then the final observation, you know, I think about how much I love eating ice cream, how much I enjoy it. And I think, you know, trying new ways to do job search, it's tough. But I also sometimes reframe it for myself that new ways to learn, new job search techniques can be enjoyable too, right? We don't get a lot of joy of just like writing a resume, applying online, repeat, repeat, repeat. So I want you to savor this process as well uh, when you're trying to do new things. Uh, if you can help me right now, we're just at end here. Um, thank you for hearing me go on and on about uh, a topic that I love. Um, let us know what your takeaway from uh, what your takeaway is from today. Really appreciate if you could share this. We have people from forestry, uh, human kinetics engineer, oh no, sorry, kinesiology, I should say, um, LFS, I think we have engineering, we have people from all over campus. So I really appreciate to hear your takeaway. Um, so we'll put that in the link there. Uh, Kalini just put it in there. I'm going to stay around for a few minutes, actually probably 10 to 15 minutes uh, to answer any specific questions. We covered a lot. We went through six levels of weak tie building and they require different levels of courage. I hope today you can focus on one action to take, um, to do on your LinkedIn. Um, it starts at, you know, ground zero. And eventually after a while, you get up to like a higher level. And I, I've, I've been doing that for four years. And um, yeah, I've, I've been learning a lot. And I'm happy that I was able to share some of that with you. But at the end of the day, you have to apply some of these job search uh, strategies as well. Thanks, everyone.